Good evening, everybody. Good it evening. is a Sunday Hello. evening. Hello, and welcome to the fireside chat. I just thought we'd do a slightly different uh, beginning there. Were you very comfortable? I uh, no, I was log? in fact massively uncomfortable. I thought of lying my head in your lap, and then I thought that will be what they term orkies. Yes, yes, yes thank it you for not. Yes, one marvelous. Okay, on with that. Wonderful to have Tristan with us today. And I believe he was very amusing, and indeed, I have no doubt he was massively informative. He's very experienced, and it was wonderful to have him on drive with us today. Uh, <coughs> much more for smoke blowing our way. <coughs> Jamie Patterson, if you're wondering what she did this afternoon, well, she was knocking about the place doing some filming for your superhero the shots. Superhero shots, yes. Did it's you... my favourite thing in the whole wide yes. world. Yes, because you are it. such a narcissist. Yes, of course. I really am. Yes. Um, Unlike it's very me. Very comfortable. Mm. And um, okay, did you look heroic? I think so. I think with Jean Dre filming, anybody looks. I was just, just so emotional. I'm, the it? tears are streaming from yes. my eyes. You I'm sure so, I looked suitably heroic. You were yes. so heroically super it was that just too you much. are now crying. Yes, I'm Would now you like to sit on this side of me? No, I think. Well, I was okay up until about two seconds ago. Okay. When it, all right, well, you just, you just suffer through it then. Okay, I'll do now, everyone, we've got two main themes for you today. Uh, the first being the Mara. Now, the Mara I went to, I have now been um, de described by some of our viewers as the Mara expert on the back end of two days there. <laughs> I'm not an expert on the Mara by any stretch of the imagination. I am, however, utterly astounded by it. And if you have a look at this next clip, you'll see why. Here we go, here we go everybody. They're coming. They're going in. There's some hippo opposite them. Oh! I cannot believe this. There's a little one. There's a little one. So it's not that easy for the croc. He's grabbed one. That is a massive crocodile everybody. It's got to be at least 10 feet long. He's grabbed one by the tail, by the leg now. He's grabbed it, he's got it by the tail. And we'll just see if we don't see one perhaps missing a tail. You can hear it bellowing. There he comes, here he comes, here he comes. There he goes, straight for one there. Oh, jeepers, this is unbelievable. There, he's got one. No, it's got away. That crocodile is the biggest crocodile I've ever seen, everyone, and there are many of them here. Zebras have thought no ways. She was people. I really didn't expect to see this on our very first. Now, the first thing I'd quite like to say about that clip was that um, my presenting obviously is just one of a gobsmacked tourist. There's nothing biologically impressive about it. In fact, I'm slightly embarrassed by what you've just seen. I thought it was lovely. But that's very kind of you, thank you. I think it was just instinctual behavior. It was just so amazing. The second thing to note about that is the incompetence of that crocodile. <laughs> now, it incompetent. after we watched it, Graham <laughs> said to me, he's watched hundreds of documentaries about the Mara and he's in fact spent some time on that very river. And he was under the impression that the crocodiles always caught. And of course, if you watch a documentary, that's what you yeah. think. In the same way that if you watch a documentary about lions, you'll think that they murder things on a sort of five minutely basis every time they think about that wanting to eat their can. Anyway, the next day after that, after we left Gormless Crocodile there, we watched the same kind of thing happening, except that the crocodiles didn't. <coughs> Excuse me, the crocodiles didn't miss at all. They nailed three wildebeest and one zebra in the space of not very long at all. I too was overcome with emotion by the scene. Um, on the subject of being overcome with emotion, yeah. <laughs> James you. Richard would like to know if you have a wish list for your return. <laughs> Apart um, from being able to breathe and see, yes. which is high priority. I do have a wish list. Our big priority for the next uh, trip there, of course, which will be at the end of the month, is to try and get hold of a lion kill live at night. And that's what we're going to be trying to do. 
I don't think it's going to be easy. There, we don't know anything about the lines. There's, the information coming in on the different lines of the Mara Triangle is fairly sketchy, and it's because it's so big. There aren't anything like the number of tourists concentrating on the actual prides like there are here. So I think that's going to be very difficult, but I also, say, also think that it will be remarkably rewarding if we can actually do it. So that's great. And I was just saying, of course, uh, we're not exactly sure how it's going to work yet, but there will be nighttime running here at the same time as there's nighttime running over there in Kenya. And that's because, you know, that'll just give us some variety. And I said to Graham while we were there, I said, watch the Inkuhuma Pride pull one out of the box <laughs> while we're all the way in Kenya trying to film a lion pride killing at night. Probably, will do it. Will probably perform for us. So that'll be that's one thing we're hoping to see. I'm hoping to just kind of absorb more of that unbelievable atmosphere and to watch more of the crossings to try and understand why they do that because as far as I understand it nobody really gets why those animals cross the river and as I said while I was there it's quite important to note that they don't just cross once they go up and down across that river because the northern section of that Mara Serengeti ecosystem is sort of cut into a third and two thirds by the Mara River and the animals go across it hundreds of times over the course of the three months that they're up there so that's very odd and nobody really understands why. Have you been there? I haven't been there, no. That's high on my list of yeah. places to go. What is? It, what about it do you think oh, attracts you? I'm sorry. It's quite all right. It's, it's the emotion that again. Emotional yes, subject. Bubbling up. to the surface. Yes. I think it's the space and the numbers of mm. animals. And just from the experience that you seem mm. to have had and what I've seen from it, that's yeah. high on my list of places that I would like to go. It was certainly one of the most amazing things for me to see is the sheer expanse mm. and the vast number of animals. We see a wildebeest here, we stop immediately. We do a segment on it. Absolutely. There you uh, wouldn't drive more than maybe half a mile uh, in the space of 100,000 segments because there are that many animals to see. Well, thank goodness for that crocodile. Yes, the gormless crocodile, exactly. Yes, if that crocodile didn't have that many animals to eat, I suspect he'd have starved a long time ago. All right, let's move on to our next clip. And a quite astounding sighting that Jamie had the other day. You'd like, would you like to just tell us a little bit about it before Ooh. we begin? No, before we go into the clip, I think those of you who are watching will know over the last week will know exactly the one that we're talking mm. about, which involved five different leopards, one hyena and three wild dogs. So have a look at this. Karula's no longer alone for two reasons. One, the cub is there. Um, one, Tingana's just arrived. Shadow is Karula's daughter. We spoke about sharing kills before, so there's not a major threat to Karula or her cubs in this scenario. It's just a fascinating situation. Here's Shadow looking slightly with her nose out of joint, as if the soap opera couldn't get any more dramatic. Look who has turned up to scout the scene. A hyena at the base of the marula tree and a shadow lying right in front of it, which we often see with leopards and hyenas. And all along, the winner of this particular scenario rests, if not comfortably, then perhaps precariously on his marula tree. It is now obviously very, very dark. We will be leaving the sighting as soon as we've finished off with our sunset safari. Wild dogs. There's wild dogs in this sighting. I don't believe this. Run, Shadow, run, Shadow, run. This is absolutely phenomenal. We can't move just now. We need to give these leopards space. Run, 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 up. Good girl. This is absolutely astounding. My goodness gracious me. The most, one of the most extraordinary sightings. <laughs> I'm speechless. Apparently you guys are all speechless. I'm speechless too. <laughs> and what a truly remarkable sighting that was. I mean, that concentration of predators in one mm. particular moment was absolutely... And it was as I was doing my closing that the wild dogs came in. We were winding <laughs> down gently. Tingana was resting uncomfortably in a tree and it was all sort of finishing except 
three wild dogs came in and chased them all up the trees. Now I've seen that clip of course and um, the highlight for me and I have no doubt for absolutely everybody out there was a uh, run shadow run shadow run. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to live. With such poise <laughs> and such determination and indeed inspired the leopard to leap up a tree and escape from the wild dogs. <laughs> it was very it was very genuine at the time. I was it, I was quite it was terrified. Wonderful. It was wonderful. And I mean in hindsight I don't think that terror was in any way justified because they might have even if one of them had caught her, I mean the ferocity of an angry leopard. I've seen three situation. wild dogs catch a male leopard. Have you? And pin him. And, really? Yeah. And a young male, uh, sort of two and a half years old. Uh, no, three years old, and they can they can do some serious yeah. damage. Yeah. No, it was anyway, an amazing sighting, and I suppose I mean very. It's not that unusual, is it? Well, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think this actually we the percentage that we see in terms of yeah. the animals' lives. This probably happens all the time yeah. around a kill. I think it does. I think it does. I mean, you see how comfortable leopards and hyenas yeah. are around each other, and. Um, they they were absolutely, yeah. I, I think they knew exactly what they were doing. Shadow was lying five meters yeah. from that hyena at one point. Unless you wanted to know, so I saw the cubs. I, I did, right at the point where Tingana came in with Shadow, I'd just, just seen the two cubs moving towards Mom and Krula. actually called them initially before Tingana showed up. So I think they were on their way. So we know they were there. And then Herbert, of course, the next morning tracked them straight over yeah. the southern boundary. So they had made it through that sighting unscathed. And then also... Uh, they were found to no, the cubs. I don't know if the cubs are found today, but Karula, Tandi, not Tandi, Karula, Shadow, and Tingana were found in the same sighting south of us on Little Gari, which is just slightly bizarre. Fascinating. But we've also seen interactions between leopards <coughs> and wild dogs, where leopards have taken wild dogs' kills, and yeah. they, I mean, you wouldn't think they would, because in, they normally avoid wild dogs, they go up the trees like they did yesterday, they don't take risks, because I've seen male leopards come shooting out of bushes, grabbing, uh, the, you know, they're attracted by the noise, they come and they have a look, and they're not beyond scavenging, and they'll grab something straight through, and they're so fast, shoot up a tree with a steenbok or yeah. a impala or something like that, and hang it from a limb, and there they will m sort of feed while the dogs yap underneath very cross. Now yesterday I had a very very rare pleasure and I must just um, just say something before we watch this clip. Brian and I were coming down to the waterhole and we saw the leopard and I slowed down and the leopard at about 150 meters got up looked and ran so we stopped and we waited and then slowly we moved away. Oh we don't actually have a clip of this sorry so we're just going to discuss it and eventually we got closer and closer and closer and she just let us sit with her which was wonderful so that is the grand daughter of the great Sarayesha, queen of the west i suppose we might refer I suppose to her you as. would yes have you seen her um i went past that sighting at the end of the ah, sunset safari yes. i happened to have kirsty on the back of the vehicle okay so we thought we'd pop by right, and just fair enough. pay a visit yes. to a leopard that i have not yet mm. seen of course and i saw tandy's daughter as well this oh. week so the I've new had one. yes, well not the new, not no, new not new one, new but new one. no, I've, I've seen Tandy's daughter who doesn't have a name. And oh, the again, one you saw on Cheetah Plains. Yes. Okay, so yeah. it's been a week of new leopards. It has been a week of new leopards. That is marvelous Truly indeed. Special. I nearly got you to say leopard, but you didn't. I didn't. Sorry. No. Um, and Ch I found quite interestingly both in Chile and the rest of her ilk, they kind of sort of. Um, brown, uh, not in a bad way of course, one doesn't insult the leopards on this show, not if one values one's life, uh, they're kind of brown, uh, the Incanieni lineage is golden and then the honey coloured lineage of Karula, I think it's quite remarkable that the colours are so different. Now we have a treat of course, today I did my kangaroo hop on the uh, sort of so advent of Australia's this. National Wildlife Day, Jamie failed to do that. Now. Jamie, would you I like hop, to just hop from the skull? Hop from the skull. From the skull the towards skull. the fire, but oh, not wow. into it. Oh, what, is, now, what is the idea? We yes, we were, no, well, it's, you're not a bunny, are you? You're well, a, no, a kangaroo. kangaroo. I'm right, a kangaroo, so you, you, I mean, you're a I'm kangaroo's a, box. I'm quite strong, yes, right. I'm not quite a bunny. Right, off you go then. All right then. That's very, very athletic I'm very hopping. I'm very scared. Right, well, there you are. You can sit back down again there. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Right. That's going to be it <laughs> from us, everyone. We will see you tomorrow at 0600. Until then, stay safe and happy wherever you are, and thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye, everybody.